Today we're looking at this really cool, awesome macro keypad. There's 12 buttons total and four knobs. You can get this in various configurations, just as two knobs, one knob, whatever. For size comparison, here's a $20 bill and a nine volt battery. The thickness is about the same as a nine volt battery. The whole thing is made of various uh, sheets of acrylic. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the multiple layers of it. It looks kind of homemade, doesn't it? On the bottom, there is the uh, protective cover for the acrylic sheets, as you can see. So this thing is very slippery. And by the way, the screws are not flush mounted, so it will scratch your desk. If you have something like a glass desk, for instance, my desk is really cheap, so I really don't care if it scratches or not. And the whole thing is very slippery. So you should definitely get something like those uh, grip pads, just in case you don't like slippery stuff. Yeah, it slides all over the place on my desk. There's only two buttons. There's the on and off button right here as well as the changing the layers. Let me show you what I mean by that. So right now it's in the on position. Let's change it to layers, two, three, and back to one. What does it mean? It means that on layer one, suppose this is the letter A. If I change it to layer two, then this is now B or something. It can be anything that you want. It is no longer A. And of course, you can change it to layer three. So now this can be become the letter C, for instance. So you got 12 buttons here, four knobs, and this is also a button, by the way. You can click down on it, and it will do something, whatever that you want it to do. By the way, it's kind of confusing, right? Because none of the buttons, all of them are actually the same. So I actually use a heat gun, uh, a flame actually. I use the flame to heat up the um, paper clip and then I mark it down onto the keyboards. That way I have an indentation of which keys I'm holding onto. But of course, by default, all of them are the same. These are mechanical switches, by the way, red to be exact. When mine came out of the box, some of these keys were uh, floating around, so I had to manually push it in. These are basically potentiometer, so if you want to change the uh, knobs to whatever you want, you can just yank it out and then push it back in. Rotary encoder, to be sure. They do not scroll smoothly you can actually feel the stops the level stops i don't know if that matters to you but for some people i know that it does so it's not super smooth right i mean you can spin it and then it will stop pressing the keys feels pretty Comfortable, feels very natural. I love how it uh, clicks into position. Here you see the previous macro P pad that I was using. And this is actually really good because every time you change the layers, you can see the labels. I don't know if you can see it on cameras or not, but the labels change accordingly to whatever keys that I change it to, program it to. Believe it or not, this is much better than this right here, just because you can see the display, you can see the labels of the keys. Whereas this can get pretty wild because every time you change the layers, you better know which keys you program it to be, right? There's actually no labels whatsoever on the keys. 
Also, one other thing that's pretty annoying about this keypad is that when you change programs, change applications, the keys do not change accordingly. What does that mean? For instance, right now in um, Firefox, this will be my back button going forward. If I change this to uh, DaVinci Resolve, then this button will stay the same, which is back and forwards. In DaVinci Resolve would not make any sense, right? But of course, because this program is pretty slick, the Sense Lab program is pretty slick, it knows which application that you're using and it will change the keys accordingly. If you're using the auto hotkey, maybe you can change it to be um, program sensitive, program awareness. But otherwise, by default, the uh, program that this keyboard came with is not aware of which application that you're using. If you program this to be button A, then all the other programs were still stuck to program A. That's a huge problem. And sadly, there is no profiles whatsoever. So it's not like you can change profiles to uh, DaVinci Resolve for today and then have another profiles for Photoshop and have a third profile for Lightroom for whatever. Every time you change it, you have to change the whole thing. And that's really time consuming and annoying. So for now, this is what I'll be using for the wrench resolve for most of the time of my editing. On the keyboard, there is the on and off button. And if you want to use Bluetooth, go ahead and flip the switch to the on position. Then in Windows, go into your Bluetooth, add a Bluetooth device. Click on add Bluetooth, Bluetooth again. And then you'll see the mini keyboard. Click on it. And then click on done. Once connected, you can see the battery percentage left. Open up Notepad and then start playing around with the buttons that's already programmed on the macro keyboard. By default, it's like A, B, C, D, stuff like that. Nothing useful. Now, to make it useful, you'll definitely need this program right here is called mini keyboard. I'm going to have the zip file for you in the download link description below. Extract the zip file and put it in your programs folder and then make a new folder. I'm going to label mine as macro keypad. So once all is said and done, here are all the files from the zip file that you extracted to and then click on exe. Go ahead and connect the keypad to your Windows machine using the provided USB-C core. Once connected, go ahead and click on Read Device. So here you can see all of my program uh, stuff for DaVinci Resolve already. The top left button is used for volume control. One of the button, one of the scroll button is used for the zooming in and out of the timeline. The bottom is for scrolling around the timeline. You got all of the base keys for here. You can do Control Shift Alt, Multimedia. This keypad does have LED, but I'm not going to use it just because I don't need it and it's going to waste power. Some of the buttons can be used in conjunction as a mouse, as you can see here for scrolling up. I'm not sure about delay settings, but there is an option for delay, which I don't use at the moment. So for instance, for here, number four, it's currently programmed as D. If you wanted to change it to something else, go ahead and click on clear. Do not click on clear all because it will wipe out everything, all of this programming, and then you'll have to restart all over again. Remember, there is no profiles whatsoever. So if you mess up, it's kind of painful to start all over again. If I want this number four keypad to be something else, like the insert button, click on insert. If you want to change the layer two programming, go ahead and click on number two, and then change the buttons accordingly. Once you're satisfied with all of your settings for the macro keypad, go ahead and click on download. This will publish all of your settings to the keypad. And then you can remove the USB-C core from the keypad if you want to. By the way, if you're going to be using the keypad connected via the USB-C cable, then be sure to hit the off button to turn off Bluetooth. 
the on and off button is just for Bluetooth. All right, hopefully you found this video of the keypad helpful. If you ever find a way to save profiles or make this keypad even better, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm sure there is a way to make it better, but for now, I have no idea. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.